Hey, what is up guys? And today we're going to be building the drone mesh FPV drone finder V2. Now this is a project that is based on the RX 5808 Pro open source project. And the reason why I did this is I wanted to make a really nice FPV drone finder that is based off of the VTX's RSSI and also be used as a ground station. And at the same time, create a kit that has every single piece in it so you can kind of get an idea and it'll just give you a little fun project and also kind of hopefully get you into electronic. Now, like I mentioned, this can be used to find your quadcopter. It can also be used as a ground station and it is highly programmable if you know what you're doing. So in this video, we're going to go ahead and start building this. And let's just take a look at some of the components that this kit comes with. So we do get four resistors. Three resistors are going to be 1K and one is going to be a 100K resistor. And this is going to be for the RSSI reading. And I'll explain all this as we're building it. You're going to get an Arduino Nano. You're also going to have an OLED. The RX5808 receiving module, this is found on every single, or just about 95% of every single receiver. Whether it's in the IOM way, whether it's in the Sky Zone, Furious FPV modules, this is the piece that is almost every single thing in the market, which is a really good uh, receiver here. You also get your RPSMA, you also get three momentary buttons, and a voltage regulator, as well as the PCB. However, the XC60 or the power wire are not included, so you're going to have to bring that on your own. So the first thing you want to do here is you want to go ahead and set up your power input, which is going to be ground in VCC because we will be soldering the voltage regulator like so and making sure it's going to run five volts before connecting everything else. All right. So as you can tell, that is done with currently. So what you want to do is you want to put the red wire on VCC and the black wire on ground. Next up, we want to do is grab our voltage regulator. And as you can tell here, you do have the word in and out and as well, you will find the same exact thing on the bottom, you'll see the in plus and the in minus. So what you want to do is make sure the in is on this side and the out is on that side. And if you wanted to double check, if you take a closer look, you'll see the positive and you'll see the negative. So if we see, if we take a look here, it says in minus in positive. So there's a positive and we're just going to have to flip it like so. And we're just going to solder that into place. So you can solder it directly to the board like this, or you can use some kind of pin header. However, what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to solder it direct. Just make sure my orientation is correct. And uh, let's go ahead and set that up. So what I like to do is add a little bit of solder first before bringing in that piece just on one side. And then there we go. Double check everything. Perfect. And then I just hit that up. Let me come back in a little bit and make sure everything is good here. Let it cool down. All right, so that's in. I'm just gonna add a little bit more. It'll seep through the hole and find its way all the way down, which is really nice. All right, once that's in place, you wanna go ahead and do the other one. So we're just gonna go from the top here and just have it slide through to the bottom. Just get, keep it for a, for a bit while it just seeps through. And you can start to see it on the bottom form when you add a little pressure. All right, so that's in. And we're just gonna do the same thing to the other ones. All right, guys, now the voltage regulator is installed. And the next thing we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and plug in your battery. So let's go ahead and set that up. So here, I have plugged in my battery. And now we want to make sure this is outputting five volts. And the way to do that here is we're gonna grab our multimeter and we're gonna check V in with the positive lead and then ground with the black lead of the multimeter. So let's do that together. And there's a small potentiometer right there on the voltage regulator, which we'll take a look at right now so we can set up the voltage. So currently it's outputting 19.9 volts. So what we wanna do is we actually wanna change that up and we're gonna Go ahead. There's a little multimeter. I mean, there's a little potentiometer right there. So I'm just going to grab it with a small flathead. All right. So if you go clockwise, it'll drop the voltage, as you can tell here. And we want to set it between five and uh, six volts here. So there we go. We're almost there. All right. That's really good. 5.6 volts is going to be beautiful. So now the step is done. This is like the hardest step here. Now every, we know everything is ready to be installed. So we can go ahead and unplug the power now and uh, everything looks good. Everything's running. And if you're not getting voltage, make sure you soldered it in correctly. All right, so now the next step is we're gonna go ahead and install the Arduino. And to set this up is, as you can tell right here, you do have these little lines that I've set up here. And this means tells you that the USB is pointing that way. So what you wanna do is you just wanna drop this guy right in 
and go ahead and just start soldering him. And I'll do a couple pins together with you. So if you don't know how to do this, you can go ahead and check it out. And then uh, we'll skip over the rest because it's just the same process all over. So what I like to do is coming from one side of the pin and then bring in the solder from the other side. And that's it, and that should hold it. There we go. All right, so once the Arduino is soldered into place, now we want to go ahead and move up to the buttons here. So the way to install the buttons here, if you, if you take a look here, the, the legs are, you want them to be pointing out like so, as you can tell here, they do have a flat side. You want the flat side to be pointing to the edge of the board. So what we want to do is we want to grab these guys right here and just install them like so. They'll have a very nice good grip once they're installed. These are going to be to change channels and do the band scanning and just just navigate the menu here. All right, so once those are into place, we want to go ahead and take a look at the other side and just start soldering them into place. And it's the same process here. Now just be careful, you might kind of get confused because it's kind of hard to see them. Don't close these holes here because these are for the resistors. So start from here and then just move your way down so you don't close the hole for the resistor and it'll just give you a little bit of extra work which was not really necessary if you were just paying attention. So it's the same process, just heat up the pads and just add a little solder and we're good to go on these. So I have my soldering station set to 400 here. I want to make sure they're aligned really nicely. Alright, so just double check the alignment so everything looks good. So now our buttons are in the place here and uh, everything is nicely set. So now it's the resistors turns. Now the resistors are really simple to figure out here. You don't really need to go and check the color coded chart or anything. You're gonna have three resistors that are exactly identical and one that is different. You want the three that are identical to go here to which is R1, R2 and R3 are the identical ones. And the one that looks a little bit different than the others, which is going to be this one for me, is going to go up here, which is this is the 100K resistor. So I'm going to go ahead and install these. And it's very simple to install them. Just follow the little picture, as you can tell, just like so. And it, the orientation does not really matter here. So it, don't worry about that. Don't, you don't need to put too much solder on it. And then you're going to have to trim these off before booting it on. Make sure you trim these off before you boot this uh, this device on. So I'm going to go ahead and skip over the other two resistors and I'll be right back. Once the resistors are installed, they should look something like this. You should go ahead and trim off the little excess legs so you don't have anything shorting out. Now to double check that you did everything correctly, make sure the only one that's left is the one that looks different than these three because this is going to be the 100K, 100K ohm resistor here. So after you install your resistors, it should look something like this and make sure you trim these off. Now and again, the orientation doesn't matter, but they have to be the three identical resistors, which are 1k resistors here so the bottom side of the board is complete here now the next thing I recommend you do is you move up to the RX 5808 receiver and the reason why I'm doing this now is because it makes it a little bit easier to solder this instead of having the OLED in the way and the OLED is pretty sensitive so you don't really don't want to hit it with a soldering iron by mistake and you're ruining your OLED so what I want to do just align it up it's very simple to align up as you can tell here uh, everything is clearly labeled and everything is just set up perfectly and it just has the exact perfect dimensions here and now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start with one pad and the reason why we do one pad first is because we can easily heat up one pad and then just fix the orientation of the module here I'm just gonna add a little bit of solder not too much there we go wait for that to dry make sure I have it perfectly aligned all right, so now we just check the alignment. The alignment looks really, really nice. So let's go ahead and just start soldering these into place. And soldering them into place is very simple. So I'll just do one here together and then we'll just skip over the rest. Now, whatever you do, make sure you start with the, with the RX5008 and then move down to the pad here, as you can tell what I did. And you don't want to bridge one of these pads with the shielding because this is ground. So we're going to go ahead and start here with the pad that's on the RX5808 and just slide down. And then the same kind of motion. You don't want to put too much here. And there we go. And that should be good. All right. Now I'm going to skip over the rest and I'll be back. All right. So once done, it should look something like this. If you take a closer look here, you kind of get an idea of what's really going on. It's not really thick, but it can be thick. That's totally fine. But we heated up the pad and then dropped our, our soldering iron down. And then it made a really nice 
concave connection to the pads here which is really nice and if you put too much solder double check these because the solder will seep through here and uh, what you can do is just come in with your soldering iron heat that up and it should pop back to the other side so let gravity do its work here so we had a little bit extra here not that much but just in case double check this side in case you have two of these that bridged and then once you do that come back in and double check this side Alright, so that's all done. All we have left to do now is one resistor in the OLED. The OLED, like I mentioned, is very simple. So make sure you take note of your OLED. If it says VCC, then you're going to connect it to the one where it says VCC. If it says ground first, then you're going to connect it to the one where it says ground. So mine says VCC, so I'm going to go ahead and connect it to the top pad here. Alright, and what I recommend you do here is you don't install all of them at first. Just put one so you can align it if it needs aligning. So there we go. As you can tell, mine does need aligning. So what I'll do is I'll just put my hand like so, find the pin that I soldered, and then just add a little solder, and then just put it into however I want it here. And I have aligned it with my thumb on the other side, and now it's perfect. So now I can go ahead and do the other pads, or the other pins. Now I highly recommend you keep checking if you bridged anything, you know, from any of your Arduino pins to any of these here, which is really important so you don't burn anything. All right, so now we have our OLED installed. All we need to do now is install our SMA port and our resistor here. And this is the 100K resistor. This is the one that's going to the RSSI that's being connected to the input of uh, the Arduino here on the analog input, which monitors the RSSI and uh, gives us that little nice graph that's going for it. Now, the last thing to do is just to set up the, uh, the SMA port here. And the SMA port, it should be installed like so. So as you can tell, there's the middle pin. Now the middle pin must be on top because as you can tell on the bottom side, there is nothing. So we're gonna have to install it like this. And now since I've had a little solder blob here uh, come in, that's gonna just make it a little bit more difficult. But I do have solder wick, which is highly recommended if you ever do any soldering to keep with you at all times just so you can clean it up. So that's what we're gonna do here. All right, so that's all clean now. Let's go ahead and uh, install this. So I'm just gonna add a little bit. You don't wanna add force to push it away because that'll make things a little bit more difficult later. So I'm just adding a little bit of solder right now. I just wanna hold it into place and then I can worry about everything else later. All right. It's okay if the solder isn't really great at first, we just need it to hold in place. And that seems like it's holding. So now we can hit it with everything else. All right, so once we have that set into place, then we do we just add a little solder to the middle one and do not touch this thing because it's really, really hot here. Really, really hot. So you'll burn yourself. And now we just add a little solder to the other side here. Now, if you manage to bridge the back, if you manage to bridge these together like so that's totally fine because that's what's what well, that's what the PCB is doing anyway so that, that's also that's not a big issue here just make sure you don't bridge the middle one with anything else so as you can tell here if for some reason yours bridged or the middle one bridged or that one bridged that's totally fine you don't have nothing to worry about here all right guys once complete you should have something like this and this is going to currently end it for part one of the video part two of the video we're going to be going into the flashing side as well as 3d printing the design that i've created for this not only that i do have a couple things that are going to be attached to this that you can purchase and create into an awesome little ground station and again you do have audio output video output and a ground right here so if you want to connect to the ground station which we will be doing i found a really nice little cheap setup which is going to look absolutely phenomenal and not only that you can also use it like i mentioned as a drone finder and yeah so i really hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know what you guys think of the kit and uh if you can go ahead and check them out they are available on banggood right now that actually really supports the channel if you can check those out and also i do have bigger projects coming if these work out really great i have an open source open hardware f4 flight controller and an f7 flight controller with dual gyros and it's going to be a pretty awesome little project which i will be working with a couple people also on and it's going to be really fun so i really hope you guys enjoyed the video and um yeah you can get it from banggood if you wanted one and next video which will be out tomorrow we'll be doing the flashing of this so yeah i really hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next one peace out guys